Hello friends, this is Sanjay. In this video, we'll be talking about uh, the principles of development of children, which is part of the Karnataka TET CDP syllabus for paper 1 and paper 2. Under the principles of development of children, we will cover 8 important principles because these are the most frequently asked principles in various question papers. These are cephalocaudal, proximodistal, simple to complex, general to specific, individual rates of growth and development, interrelation, interaction between heredity and environment, and development is a continuous process. At the end, we will also solve 5 sample questions from various uh, previous question papers so that you get an idea as to what kind of questions are formed using this chapter. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to understand is uh, what are these principles of development and where did they come from? How did they evolve? In the previous video, we studied that uh, development is a progressive series of orderly and coherent changes. That is, there is a progressive series of steps that happen in any kind of development. And there is a specific order that is followed in any kind of development. And the changes that are happening are coherent. For example, if we look at uh, physical development, we know that every person will start off as a helpless young baby. And then there is a period of physical growth. And then there is a period of stability where the person is at peak health. And after a particular age, the health or the physical wellness will start declining. And this is the same series of steps that happen in every person's life. And these changes are also orderly. We know that a person will go from level 1 to level 2 to level 3 and so on. There is no way that a person can go from level 1 to level 4, come back to level 2, go back to level 5. So such disorderly movement is not possible. There is a specific order that needs to be followed in any kind of development. So if the changes are orderly and there is a specific series, it means that the changes are coherent and they are predictable. For example, if you look at the cognitive development, we know that every person will start off at level 0 when the person is a child. And then there is a period of cognitive development that happens up to a particular age, after which the cognitive abilities will start declining. And these are the same type of changes that will happen in every human being's life. So if development is a series of steps, there is a specific order to any kind of development and these changes are coherent and predictable, then some principles can be developed around the concept of development. So these principles which help us identify or predict what kind of changes will happen in a person's life are nothing but the principles of development. The first important principle of development is cephalocaudal development. Cephalo means head and caudal means tail. And this principle says that uh, the development of the baby starts from the head and moves towards the tail. And this is something that is scientifically proven as well, saying that uh, the brain is the first or one of the first parts of the body that develops and the limbs will develop later. And if you look at uh, even after birth, the child will first start to move its uh, head. That is, the child can look at various sounds or turn its uh, head towards uh, various objects. So the child learns to control the head first. And then the child will learn to control his or her arms. And then the child will start controlling his or her legs. So development starts from the top and moves towards the bottom part of the body. That is, the head will develop first and control of the head will come first. Arms will develop next and control of the arms will come next. And then the control of the legs will happen. Therefore, this is cephalocaudal development. The next principle of development that we will see is proximodistal development. Proximo can mean from the center and distal can mean towards the outside. So this principle says that uh, the development of a child happens from the center of the body and moves towards the outside. For example, the spine is one of the first organs to develop and the development of the arms and the legs happens after the spine has been developed to a certain extent. So the development starts from the center. If you were to look at it, the spinal cord has to develop first for the baby to be able to control the arms and legs. And after the spinal cord is developed and after the arms are developed, the baby will learn to control his or her arms. The baby can move his or her arms. And only later, the baby can move his or her fingers. So development starts from the middle and goes towards the outer parts of the body. And this is proximo-distal development. 
The next principle of development that we will look at is something called simple to complex. And this is also quite common sense because a person has to learn simple things first and only then he or she will progress towards the more complex activities. If we look at uh, physical development, then a baby will first learn to walk. Only then the baby will move towards a more complex activity such as running. And even if we look at uh, cognitive development, a person will learn relatively simple process like addition first and only then move towards a more complex process like multiplication. Therefore, when we look at uh, any type of development, it starts with a simple process first or the simple things first and then moves towards the more complex aspects. Therefore, this is simple to complex principle of development. The next important principle of uh, development is something called general to specific. For example, if you look at uh, physical development, then the child will first learn to move the entire hand, which is a general movement. And only then the child will learn to move each finger specifically or independently. So similarly, if you look at uh, other types of development, for example, language development, then the child will first learn the language, which is general in nature, and then move towards the specifics, such as the grammar in that language. Therefore, all types of development will start with the generic or the general aspects first, and only then move towards the specific aspects. So this is the principle of general to specific. The next principle of development is individual rates of growth and development. If you look at a typical classroom, we see that every child is different. That is, the physical growth of every child will be different. Some children may grow fast, some children will take some time. Similarly, if you look at uh, language development, some children may learn language much faster than the others, some children may learn cognitive ability much uh, earlier than others. Therefore, the growth and development of every child will be different. So this is nothing but individual rates of growth and development. So if we were to restate this entire principle, that is the principle of individual rates of growth and development, this is nothing but every child is different. Next, we will look at uh, the principle of interrelation of development. So this principle says that various types of development are interrelated. For example, if you look at uh, the language development, then the physical development of the child has to happen first because the brain has to develop. Only then the cognitive abilities of the child will develop and only when the child is cognitively ready, then language development will happen. So if you look at uh, social development, then the language development has to happen for the child to be able to interact socially with others. Only then social development will happen. When the child starts interacting with others socially, then his or her language will also improve. So it comes back and language will further develop due to social interactions. And when language develops, then the child is able to absorb more information. So mental development happens due to that. Therefore, all these different types of development are interrelated. And that is the principle of interrelation of development. The next principle is the principle of interaction between heredity and environment. Now, this principle says that uh, hereditary factors and environmental factors interact each other in various types of development. Since heredity affects uh, physical development to the maximum extent, let us take that as an example. Now, a child's parents might be tall and strong. Therefore, the child has inherited the attributes from the parent through the DNA or through the genes, which say that the child also can grow into a tall and strong person. But just by having the genetic information, the child will not automatically grow into a tall and strong person. The child has to get good food, good shelter, good physical activity. Only then the child can grow into the tall and strong person that is possible because of his or her genes. So similarly, if intelligence is a factor that can be inherited and the child's parents are intelligent, then the child also can maybe grow into an intelligent individual. But just by having that type of genes, the child will not automatically grow into an intelligent individual because the child has to have the right kind of family environment. The child has to get the right kind of education. So these are all the environmental factors. So heredity is alone not enough to support various types of development. Environmental factors are also very, very important. And 
heredity and environmental factors will interact with each other for various types of development. And this interaction is also called the nature versus nurture debate. That is, nature is nothing but heredity, what we inherit naturally from our parents. And nurture is the kind of environment in which we are brought up, which includes the type of food, the type of shelter, family, education and other factors. So, this is the interaction between heredity and environment. The last important principle that we will cover in this video is that uh, development is a continuous process. And this is again simple common sense because we know that development cannot be stopped because development has various aspects. There will be physical development, mental development, social development, moral development, emotional development. So even if physical development stops after a particular period, the other types of development will continue for the duration of the person's life. Therefore, development is a continuous process which cannot be stopped anywhere. Next, let us look at uh, some sample questions from previous question papers. Now, the first question is that development is a never-ending process. This idea is associated with which of these principles? We have seen that development is a continuous process which does not stop anywhere, which is never-ending. Therefore, development is a never-ending process is associated with the principle of continuity. This question is asking us that human development is divided into various domains such as which of the following. Now, this is a tricky question and uh, I want you to use this method to solve any questions that are similar to this. That is, we will use an elimination strategy. The first thing is, when we look at all the basic types of development, then spiritual development is not something that is mentioned in any of the books. Therefore, we will remove option 1 and option 3 because Spiritual development is not specifically mentioned as an important domain of development. Right? So we are left with two options, option 2 and option 4. Now, when we look at both of these, physical and physical are common, cognitive and cognitive are common, emotional and emotional are common. Therefore, we have to choose between social development and psychological development. If you look at it, both of them are correct because both of them are different domains of development. But which one of them is stronger? Which one of them is more correct? Now, we see that social development is something that is mentioned in all the textbooks. Therefore, the correct answer has to be option 2 because physical, cognitive, emotional and social development are commonly mentioned as different domains of development. Psychological domain is also a development domain but psychological development is usually clubbed with emotional and cognitive development. Therefore, option 2 is the strongest answer among the given answers. Which are the factors that influence emotional development? This again can be answered using common sense. Because if a child is physically not healthy, then the child will be feeling very depressed and sad. Therefore, emotional development will be impacted by physical health. And if the child is not mentally growing, is not mentally developing, even because of that, mental development also becomes affected. Therefore, mental abilities are also important for emotional development. And if the child has fatigue, that is, the child is always tired because of health reasons or because of uh, other reasons, then the child cannot focus on emotional development because the child is always feeling tired, fatigued. Right? Therefore, all of these are factors which influence emotional development. Therefore, the correct answer here is all of the above. Now, to answer questions like this, if you see that there are multiple options and even if you can identify that two of them are factors, then the answer has to be all of the above because you have already chosen two and there is no two of the above. So the answer has to be all of the above. So even fatigue is a factor that influences emotional development. Which of the following sequence is appropriate when development proceeds from the center to the peripheral areas of the body? Now, previously we have seen that proximodistal development starts from the center of the body and moves towards the peripheral areas or towards the outer side of the body. Right? So development starts from the spinal cord, moves towards the arms and then moves towards the fingers. So development proceeds from center to peripheral areas. This is proximodistal development. Therefore, option two is the correct answer. We all differ in terms of our intelligence, motivation, interest, etc. So this principle refers to which of the following. Now, in a previous slide, we studied that uh, every child is different because we all have individual rates of growth and development. So, 
the type of development or the rate of development of every child will be different. Therefore, we are talking about individual differences here and that is the correct answer. And with that, we come to the end of this uh, video. I will see you in the next part. If you have any questions or feedback, please post them in the comment section below and uh, the rest, you know what to do. So till we meet again, stay safe, take care.